As they all share the meat, David talks about his experiences at Liwa. Thanks to him, his friends also realize that times have changed and that protecting wildlife helps them to preserve their ancestral way of life. If the savanna doesn't remain the same, they will be forced to leave it for the poor suburbs of big cities. Although the meat belongs to the men, the milk is for the women. Their job is to milk the animals and to take care of the gourds from which it is drunk. It's forbidden to mix milk with meat in the village, and the men remain separate from the women. A Maasai legend says that in the beginning, men and women formed two different tribes. This separation is present today, and each tribe depends on the other for either milk or meat. After a week at home, David puts on his uniform once again. He adjusts quickly to his two very different ways of life and cannot decide which he prefers. Whether it's his village or Liwa, he always goes back to it with great pleasure. David and Lecario's present mission is to locate an elephant wearing a tracker or radio transmitter. When the two men are on elephant territory, they're always very careful. Elephants are extremely rapid animals. Many Maasai stories talk about tragic accidents with this animal. Attracted by the peaceful atmosphere of Liwa, herds of elephants entered the reserve during the recent rains. 200 of them live there now. There are too many of them for such a small space, especially considering how much they eat. Food problems are bound to arise very soon. The reason why the reserve has equipped some animals with trackers is in order to locate them and better understand their migratory behavior. Ian exchanges information with other Kenyan reserves, since the elephant, like the rhinoceros, 
is a prime target for poachers. Milianda is a rhino that David knows well. He has boundless energy, and when Rita, the female, is ready to be fertilized, he is never far away. This time, however, David notices something strange in his behavior. Liwa guardians must also observe animals to see if they are in need of treatment. And David's fears are well-founded. Milianda's left eye has been attacked by ticks. The rains bring with them a number of problems, notably the return of blood-sucking parasites. Rhinos have very poor vision because of the way their eyes are positioned. They are nevertheless indispensable. Their highly developed hearing and sense of smell are not enough to assure their survival. A blind rhino is a potentially dead animal. <laughs> Soon after David's call, the usual capture procedure is launched. Milianda is quickly located by plane. Once captured and put to sleep, time is again a major factor. For a rhino, being anesthetized is a cause of great distress. In order to shorten the trauma as much as possible, Ian gives him a very weak dose, which will not last very long. David and Lecario watch Milianda for quite a while. They're worried. The rhino, with his head lowered, hasn't moved. Was there a problem with the anesthetic? Was the dose too strong for him? His reflexes are almost non-existent, and his reactions very slow. David and Lecario decide to stimulate him, to incite him to rediscover his vitality as soon as possible. Leander, come on. 
get it, get it. When they finally see him leave, they feel a sense of pride. Each rhino saved is a victory over the poachers, as well as a personal triumph. For David and Licario, protecting Liwa's wildlife means preserving this Maasai land, inhabited as recently as a century ago by lions and rhinoceroses, a land where only the bravest of men dare to venture. Yeah.